My name is Owen, and I'm an engineer working on Dagster. For this video, I'm going to walk through how you can use Dagster's new software-defined asset APIs to easily manage your external tools and integrate custom Python code as a first-class citizen to the modern data stack. Software-defined assets are a declarative framework for defining the data assets that you want to produce. These can be anything from a table in a database to a trained machine learning model. Dagster handles translating between these definitions and the tasks that need to be run to update the corresponding assets. This means that Dagster doesn't just blindly carry out tasks. Because it's a centralized place to kick off computations and it knows what assets those computations produce, it becomes a centralized place to understand the current and historical state of every asset across a data platform. To make this more concrete, let's imagine we're joining an organization that uses a couple of modern data stack tools. Our coworkers have set up Airbyte to move data from their online database to a data warehouse. And after that, they've defined a DBT project to transform the table that's in the data warehouse into analysis-ready forms. Now, we've written a forecasting model in Python to predict what next month's orders will look like. Traditionally, deploying this new code might result in significant operational overhead. Anyone trying to debug issues with our model would have to page through multiple different tools, and stakeholders would have little to no visibility on how our predictions table came to be, or if it's even up to date. By defining our assets in the Dagster framework, we can alleviate these concerns. To start, we'll get our external tools in order. We define the assets that Airbyte produces by using a function imported from the Dagster Airbyte library. We supply it a connection ID and a list of the tables that we expect it to sync, and it returns a set of Dagster assets representing these tables. Next, we define the assets produced by the DBT project in a similar way, this time pointing Dagster at the project that our coworkers have already written. We then combine these assets into a single group, along with a set of resources that Dexter will use to communicate with the relevant APIs. Now that we've defined these assets, we can view them in Dexter's UI tool, Dagit. Here, we see a view of all of the assets that we've just defined and how they're all connected. In this case, each table that Airbyte syncs is an asset and each model in DBT is an asset. Underlying this graph of assets is an operational graph, showing what steps will need to be run to refresh the assets. Just like this asset graph we just saw, the graph is automatically created by Dagster. In this example, it determines that dbt should be run only after Airbyte completes because some of the assets created by dbt depend on assets created by Airbyte. Because we haven't run anything yet, uh, we don't have any past materializations of these assets. So let's kick off a run to fix that. As this job runs, we can monitor its progress. Dagster produces detailed structured metadata on the state of each step, and rod logs from the relevant tools will flow in and can be referred back to for historical runs. While it runs, the overview page provides us a live view of the status of each asset in our graph with links back to the relevant run. As each step completes, these assets will be populated with relevant metadata about its most current state. For example, the Airbyte integration tracks the current schema of each table that it syncs, as well as the number of records that are inserted or updated. Now, there's a centralized place to learn about the assets that we care about. Users can search for specific assets and land on an asset page. Once here, users can view rich historical records, understand the dependencies, and even kick off computation to refresh its state. Now that our external tools are coordinated, we can easily integrate our forecasting model into our asset graph. To do this, we'll create two new assets. One specifying a forecasting model trained off the daily orders data that dbt produced, and another that'll use this model to predict the next month's order information and store it to predictions table. Right now, these are just regular Python functions, so we'll turn them into assets using the asset decorator. Dexter determines what upstream assets will need to be loaded as inputs to this function by inspecting the parameter names. For our second asset, we specify an IO manager to store its output data frame as a table in a database. Once we add these assets to our group and configure our IO manager, they'll appear in Dagit. We've just updated the assets that come before our forecasting models, so they probably don't need to be updated again. Dagster allows us to kick off a run for just a subset of our assets to avoid doing useless computation. After this run completes, we've completed our goal of integrating our forecasting model with data created by our external tools, greatly improving the observability and reliability of our data platform along the way. This has just been a quick demo showing off some of what you can do with software-defined assets. If you have questions or you'd like to learn more, we'd love for you to join our Slack.